Good morning, hopefully, and happy Monday to you. It is Monday, March 25th, 2019. There was a lot of basketball this weekend. I don't know if you watched any of it or witnessed the points that were scored, the games that were won. Well, it's scoring time, and I want to go over a few things. This video is going to be under five minutes. I'm going to try to do these quicker for everybody because I know everybody wants them fast. Um, so two things we're going to go over in this video. One is how to show the display of your scoring and, and look at predicting stuff in your master brackets. So for all the people who bought a master bracket, if you filled it in, first two rounds are done here. And, um, you know, hopefully you do this right. And if you do it wrong, you can always fix it. Be like, oh, did Maryland beat Louisiana State? No, I think, I don't know. What happened there? Actually, who won? I don't even remember. I think it was Louisiana State, right? I don't know. I could probably check by this guy right here. Yeah, it was Louisiana State. And they were 68% to 59, or 60 to 59. Barely they were a winner. So, so there's two things. So there's the standings we're going to go over in a minute, and then there's the AI bracket, which I keep adjusting these percentages to try to get this as good as I can. 40 and 8. 83% correct. That's what I got it up to. Can't, I can't get over here. I can't get it to make uh, Oregon beat Wisconsin and then Oregon advance like they did tonight, although they looked really good against UC Irvine, who they were predicted to beat in there. So anyway, there's the AI bracket. Well, somebody sent me um, their tournament. The, you know, there was like 20 people in their tournament. And they sent me all the brackets, and I was compiling them tonight. And that's what the master bracket over here is. I was compiling them all in my all data sheet. And I also looked at, well, what was the entry that I did the video right before the tournament started? I posted the video with the first AI bracket. I called it Ken AI one So I believe I do not have to cheat and try to win this thing. I think I have a good enough entry that I entered in before the tournament started, right? Well... I put all these 20 entries in and I also created some additional entries uh, based on these percentages. I would do a whole entry that was, for example, just about, um, I would do a whole one that was just about margin of victory or something. I'd make the whole percentage margin of victory and it would change what happens. And then I would, I would take that entry and then I would put that entry into the all data. So I did a bunch of those too and I named them as such. Now, what's interesting is I did that, okay? So the way you do that is you go to the master bracket. You have this master bracket here, and you copy the area from, from here. The call, it's called the apex area. If you, if you have the entry bracket, well, actually, this apex area is different. But the other apex area is down here. You grab that, you know, and then you paste it in your master bracket here, and you go to the bottom, and you keep pasting. And as you paste, then you go over the standing sheet, okay? Now the standings tab, you go and you right click and you refresh in this pivot table here. There's two pivot tables. And you can collapse stuff like over here, expand or collapse things to see to see certain people and uh, and also entries. Now, what's really cool about this is I went and I refreshed this, right? And it shows there are no entries in here, and we have uh, basically all, everywhere there's a name is an entry here. So I end up getting, looks like 31 entries so far, right? And if you want to remove all the blanks, you can look at this name slicer if you're on a newer version of Excel, and you can hold down the control button, or you can click this little thing right here if you have it, and get rid of the blanks. And all your blank entries will go away, but you're going to make sure if you add new entries later for some reason that you remember that to reclick them because they might not show. So here's all the entries, right? Well, it's cool how it color codes this and show shows what the winner is. Now, the ones that are in yellow that I've covered, we only got 30 seconds left, we're going to do it. Um, the ones in yellow are, are the artificial intelligence entries, and the one in blue here is my real entry, the only one that I did myself without running an AI, just that was just, you know, just me just trying to figure out what I thought was a good distribution. Um, there's another bracket I had, which was me filling it out before I ran any of the formulas with it. It was an old formula. 
that bracket stinks. And <laughs> people were complaining about that on Reddit. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. That was the one I did before the play-in games were done. I was like, you got to pay attention because the one after the play-in games is the one I went with. And if you look at the videos, that's exactly right. That's this one. So um, now I don't know who Heather Wittenberg is. Heather, I'm scared of you. You are beating me right now. You are beating my AI. I don't know how you did it. Now, Heather and I, can I beat her? Is it one of those things where she's got all of my outs, you know, in like a poker game? Well, I wanted to answer that question because I got scared. I got scared. I was like, oh my God, am I going to have to pay half this money to Heather? I don't even know who she is. I better take her out for wine. All right, so I decided to look and I said, first of all, let's forget about the regressive round AI round two. That's one that I started after the a tournament started for to try to get the optimal distribution. So let's not show that one either because I don't want that to distort the fact that that's not a real entry. All the yellow ones are really not real entries, but I kind of wanted to see where they showed up in the distribution of everybody else too, which is kind of cool. Now, I wanted to see, oh yeah, we're going over five minutes. I wanted to see, can I beat Heather? And uh, so how do you figure that out, right? Um, well, what you can see here is you see the different rounds and how many points we have remaining. And you can see that she got one more point in round one. Now, how can I dig that out and find out what that was? Well, if I only care about me and Heather, I can go back to the slicer here. And I can do something like just clicking on me. I can clear everybody and then, you know, just click on me and Heather. There's Heather. And, oops, no, I got to get rid of that thing. And now I can just click on Heather and then hold down control and click on Ken AI if I can find my name. Hold down control and do that. You can click two people at the same time within the slicer. You can also do things with these. I'm sorry, we're going into an Excel lesson, but why not? You can also change these slicers, columns and stuff, so that you can see this in a different way. If you really want to mess around with this and change everything so that we can do this. If you really had to do major, major stuff and not just creating 20 entries. But it's cool to do. So now I'm like, all right, well, can I beat Heather or am I done for? Right? Should I just write her the check now? And luckily, I, I know I'm okay. Well, how did I figure that out? Well, there are other things in this pivot table you can move around and open up. How about entry picks? How about I put entry picks above entry number? Now all of a sudden, I have it sorted in such a way because I sorted it descending by by points of points remaining potentially. So you can see that she has Duke all the way, which is what my regressive AI has, so good for her. I do not have Duke. I have Gonzaga. So I can beat her because we don't fight for the final. It's gonna come down to Gonzaga and essentially I'm gonna have to get lucky because my regressive AI tells me that uh, Duke is supposed to win. But Duke has been looking weird. If you watch, Duke barely won by like a point today. And I think that Duke is going to let us down this year. I think Krzyzewski's not going to pull it off. So I hope you learned something about ways that you can organize and look through stats and simulate stuff. We could have gone through and just ran out all the simulations. But you can also do it the smart way and really dig through the, the standings and dig through the teams and see... You can see like where, what kind of picks does everyone have in terms of uh, entry pick wise, right? This is kind of cool to say, well, uh, in terms of like how far they have teams advancing, you can see that like, you know, very few people, one guy I think has Houston winning the whole thing, a team that's still alive. So the, the Houston guy here, if you see Houston pulling a big upset against somebody, you know that it's entry. It's the win percentage entry. It's not even a real person. It's um, it's an AI entry that does that. Anyway, so this is really great stuff. I'm scared of Heather, but I'm rooting for Gonzaga, and I know I have something that uh, that's very cool. And then we'll discuss further questions. If you want to learn ways to alter these tables and create charts and stuff out of this, we could do that as well. So I hope everyone is having a calm Monday and not having to scroll this by hand, and. Not, I mean, there's a lot of good teams that won. The file went, the regressive algorithm and everything went 16-0 and 0 this weekend in round two. It's pretty cool stuff. So we're out.